Now, I'll just note that not all warning colors are truthful. Nature has its con artists. Some animals mimic the colors of toxic species without being toxic themselves. So think of the viceroy butterfly, which looks like the monarch butterfly. Predators who have tasted a monarch and regretted it are likely to avoid both. And this is deception through color using color as a kind of costume. And then let's not forget about the theatricality of sexual selection. Charles Darwin, at first, he found the peacock's tail to be a headache for his theory of natural selection because it seems to hinder survival. But then Darwin realized that traits like the peacock's tail could provide an advantage in the competition for mates. In other words, it's for sex appeal. Now, this apparently scandalized many scientists when he first proposed it, but the evidence holds in many species, the brightest, most colorful individuals are auditioning. They're working to signal health or genetic quality or dominance. Just think about a male mandrill's brilliantly colored face and rump. Those aren't just for decoration. They're billboards of status. I'll also mention that in some species, color shifts with mood or with context. So you may have seen a cuttlefish who can change their skin pattern in seconds. And some fish develop intense coloration only during mating season. These color changes serve as social cues. They are visually broadcasting their intentions. So what we see is that color is one of evolution's most versatile tools that can hide, it can warn, it can deceive, it can seduce, and it can do all of this differently depending on who's watching and what their color capabilities are.